Yirashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this Saturday, we have Flutter Bombs, the Supreme Butterfly Twin Stick Shooter. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From Earthborn Interactive, Flutter Bombs originally released in April of 2019 for the Xbox One. Now in July of 2019, it's available for the PlayStation 4, which is the version we're playing today, and coming to PC via Steam Early Access next week. So the game has you playing the role of this butterfly, and it's a really interesting title, maybe a little bit repetitive and monotonous at times, but it also has a really like peaceful quality to it as well. Diving into the menu, first you go and select your game, and this is a really interesting part of the game. So there's three save slots, and each one has a fixed name. You can go and delete it so it says none, but when you go and select a file, it gives you a name, and you've got three awesome names, Superfly, Bugged Out, and Roachbait. So my file that I've been primarily using is Bugged Out, and that's the one we'll be looking at. You have a couple of different modes you can play the game in. There is the campaign mode, which allows you to go and play through all the stages in the campaign setting, survival, and then also a boss rush, which is unlocked after you complete the campaign. The campaign will definitely be the best way to show off the game, though. So the game is up to four-player local co-op. Uh, I, have, I have not had the chance to play it co-op to this point, so I can't really go and say much for how the multiplayer itself actually is, but it's still great that it goes and supports up to that many players. So here we are at the wing set select. Not only are you selecting your characters, or rather the number of players, but you're selecting which butterfly you are. And this is actually very important for your gameplay. So there's ten different butterflies. You start off with Opie here as your base butterfly, and we'll start a uh, stage real quick with Opie so you can kind of see what's going on and the basics with Opie himself. And uh, then we'll start, then I'll switch over real quick to my favorite butterfly. So the base mechanics are you have the ability to fly around twin stick style, and we have the ability to shoot, specifically our nectar shots. So as you shoot, we're depleting the nectar that we have available to us, which is the yellow meter in the top left, below the blue meter, which happens to be our life. If we, have, if we run out of uh, nectar, we're unable to shoot, so we just pick up some uh, yellow orbs to refill the nectar. The other thing that the nectar is used for is to go and fire these bombs, which are especially useful for taking out these ground-based spiders, it's really the only way we have to deal with them normally. There are a couple different ways you can go and handle them in other situations, but that's your basic gameplay. So now that I've gone over that and shown you a little bit of what the Opie's um, bombs look like, I'm going to go and change to my favorite butterfly, Cloud Break. So all the butterflies have the same kind of normal shot. So that's a little bit disappointing, but their bombs are what make them unique. Cloudbreak here has these icicle bombs he throws down that explode in these big shrapnels, which can deal quite a bit of damage and also has a wide range of effect. So as we progress through the stage, we're filling a meter at the top of the stage, which will eventually lead us to the boss, but there's a couple other things about that as well. So as you refill the meter, there'll be certain points we get to where we'll actually get upgrades, and those upgrade flowers will spawn upgrades. Um, one thing that uh, is important to go and note is that it will always be the farthest upgrade flower from where you happen to be in the given stage. So if you know the location of the upgrade flowers, then that's where your upgrade will be. So let's talk a little bit about the stages themselves. So the stages are actually uh, kind of a procedurally generated arena. So you have all these various hexes that will always uh, be the same layout as far as um, the way that the stage is shaped, but what fills those hexes will be different. It could be a spot where you go and spawn spiders, 
it might be a spot where you have these upgrade flowers or it might be a spot where there are no fly zones so the no fly zones are unique to every stage and the no fly zone in the very first stage opie's grove are these little ponds that have fishes in them you fly over a no fly zone and you'll activate whatever happens to be the hazard for that particular stage. Some are more dangerous than others, uh, very hard to avoid and that actually will deal a really hefty amount of damage, so it's best to avoid the no-fly zones unless you have no other choice. If you do happen to go and take damage, one thing to note is that every single time you take out an enemy you do recover a very small amount of life, so you can use that to your advantage. So as we continue to progress through the stage, the waves get larger and larger and we see a few different types of enemies show up. In this first stage, the enemies are pretty basic. We're not really seeing anything other than enemies that chase after us and there are some that fire some slow moving shots, but nothing that's too uh, going to be too dangerous. Uh, towards the end, we'll go and see these larger flying enemies that will spawn in certain areas and they generally remain stationary but you have to be careful, they can deal quite a bit of damage. And then when we approach the end of a stage, we'll start to see these mantis show up, and they'll attack the little nectar spots that we've been collecting, stealing the nectar and turning it into this, uh, like, basically, uh, piranha plant uh, type creature, which will try to attack you rather than giving you the nectar you need for your weaponry. So there are a couple other things I haven't mentioned as far as our uh, attacks are concerned. So while we are, are, oh see, there's a mantis eye that I was like talking about. So as we progress through the stage and defeat enemies, every once in a while there'll be enemies that will give us a special power-up. There are three different power-ups that we can get. Those basically are options that surround our butterfly and give us a, an additional power-up. So like this one I have here as the blade power-up, we can use it to spin around into enemies and deal really heavy damage at close range. Very useful and they can even take out spiders, so that's one thing to keep in mind. You also have one that provides a regular an additional shot and then one that serves as a flamethrower. So once we fill up the meter we make it to our boss and this is our first stage's boss. So this is kind of a chameleon or um, lizard that's got a long tongue and we need to avoid his tongue otherwise it will deal heavy damage. Uh, the best way to go and take out most bosses, as the boss fights are a little bit uh, samey as far as the shapes are concerned, there are some uh, elements that do change though, is by getting in close, dropping a whole bunch of bombs, and then going back to refill your nectar. There will always be several uh, nectars around the boss arena, and once you've dealt enough damage, you'll defeat the boss. And if this were our first time through, we would unlock the next stage as well as the next butterfly. So each stage is named after the butterfly that you unlock as you uh, get to that stage, like Tomahawk's Temple, Neutron's Lab, etc, etc. Like here is Cloudbreak's Peak. Tex Quarry. So... The game itself, the arenas are really beautifully and detailed in uh, the nature, and in this case, the technology that's scattered throughout. So, oh, my bad. I was actually going to change to Neutron here to go and show off the way that uh, his bomb is, as his is a really, really interesting one. So the game originally started out as... A landscape study and then it evolved into a game study so that's part of the reason why the stages and the backgrounds are so detailed that's a lot of what was originally the idea behind well what they were what earthbound earthborn interactive was working on so I find that that's a really interesting place to go design a beautiful like landscape simulator and then you build a game on top of that. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other butterflies. So here we're flying around as Neutron in Neutron's lab. This is his stage that you unlock 
and his bomb is one of the most interesting in my mind. It's this gravity bomb that will suck in all these enemies and then explode in a kind of a lightning attack. It's not the most powerful bomb, but the fact that it does suck in all the enemies makes it pretty useful. Except it also sucks you in, so you do have to be careful while using it. And indeed, uh, against the boss fight in particular of this stage, it can make things pretty tricky, so you have to be careful. The spiders in this uh, stage are also uh, throwing their own little gravity bombs as well. So, you know, those kind of uh, awesome elements are one of the things that I really appreciate about this. So some of the other butterflies that we can potentially be... So there's Tomahawk from the second stage. His is an interesting dual bomb where he goes and throws down two tomahawks which do deal really nice damage. Fun to use. Then we've got Willow. Willow is another one that I really really enjoy using because his bombs they don't uh, send initially they don't blow up into a very powerful explosion rather they blow up into all these little um, seeds that uh, float around and then blow up kind of like a cluster bomb it's actually very very useful to use his bombs and then another one that I think is really interesting We've got Daisy, who has these fire bombs, which are actually fire skulls, are really neat, that will uh, have a temporary like damage over time effect, where any enemies like, caught in that will burn for a little bit of time. So you've got some really interesting and unique bombs and ideas for all the butterflies and especially if you're playing multiplayer I could imagine you could get some interesting combinations and synergies with all those so there we have it that's flutter bombs served up for your enjoyment that's basically what we have in the game so let's talk a little bit about the minus flavors that the game has so the biggest minus flavor is really the gameplay loop itself is relatively samey. There's not a whole lot of variety to it and it can get repetitive. This is definitely a game that I feel is best played in spurts, you know, play a stage or two here, stage or two there. Um, the, playing it more with multiplayer could go and change that, but it's just the gameplay does get repetitive. And then there's a little bit of disappointment in some of the variability between the butterflies. So the fact that there are no different shot types for your main shot is a little disappointing. The unique bombs really helps that, but at the same time, there are some butterflies that... Well, there was one in particular that when I played with him for the first time, I was like, nope, this is not going to go and work, and I defeated the stage with a different butterfly and that's the only case that I did that all the other stages I defeated with the butterfly that the stage was named after uh, but that's uh, tech in particular his detonator bombs are just no good but um, that's like in there and lies the problem some of the butterflies are significantly more powerful than others in, in my opinion so if you're just playing with the butterflies you want to be there's some that you're never really gonna get much playtime with at all but as far as the plus flavors are concerned I do really like the beautiful environments that the game has it's really great to see all the various environments that the they put to use in the game and as I mentioned at the very beginning, the game itself has a very peaceful, almost zen-like quality where you're just going and playing the game more to just enjoy the experience more than anything else. And really, if you're looking for a twin-stick shooter that's beautiful to look at and you don't mind that it's a little bit repetitive in its gameplay, then this might be one that's worth checking out. Well... That'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.